So in this lesson we're talking about client errors. In the 400 error section we'll mostly talk about you know the HTTP 404 status code as well as the 410 status code. 404 means that a certain URL has not been found. It is a default status code that the server will send when you try to open a URL that doesn't exist or you know it doesn't exist anymore. In comparison an HTTP 410 means gone and suggests that the requested resource is not available and actually will never be available again. It should be used when the resource has been intentionally removed. A special case which only solely exists with Google is what they call a soft 404 error. The concept is that you would serve a URL with HTTP 200 suggesting that everything is alright but in reality this page should not have returned a 200 but it should have returned a 404 instead. Google flags it in Search Console whenever they think that the URL that you serve as OK is actually not OK. This could indicate content quality issues or simply that you'd need to reconsider indexation strategies for those pages that Google actually flagged as soft 404. What happens if Google hits a 404 is the question, right? So the crawler will try to request this URL and the server will say, OK, you know, this is a 404, this URL doesn't exist. That means they can't process it any further. It will be noted in the big Google URL database and that's literally it for now. So if this URL has been reachable and has been indexed previously, you know, nothing will really happen immediately. That URL will still remain in the Google index and basically they come back and try to crawl it again and then again and eventually again. So recrawling will go on until they decide, well, you know, this 404 came back for over and over and over again, so a week or longer. However, whenever I open the URL, it doesn't exist and it continues to serve a 404. So I, as Googlebot, will remove it from the index for now. This frequent recrawling happens until they take it out of the index, really. It makes sense if you think about it, though. You know, as the 404 could have been sent by accident as well. Or the content shouldn't have been, you know, deleted in the first place. So a good starting point to check, you know, if your domain has issues with 404s is, you know, for example, again, using Google Search Console. They have a great report in there. Remember, though, that, you know, having some 404s is natural. So, you know, you should not worry too much about that. Don't freak out and focus on achieving, you know, zero 404s. In reality, this rarely can be achieved. From an SEO perspective, you need to really make sure that you watch your internal linking as well. You, know, you do not want your internal links to point to URLs that actually return a 404, you know, as Google will encounter those 404s over and over again. Massively increasing 404 error counts you know, can't be a sign of good site health and quality. So you, know, you can use your log files, for example, or Search Console, or both to revise what's going on there. And then if necessary, you can deal with the 404s and set, you know, for example, again, proper redirects or you know, just re-enable those URLs that you know, may have gone just by accident. Make sure to have a routine in place that you know, takes care of those things on a very regular basis. Another interesting point is the HTTP 410 status code. So the main difference in the case of a 410 rather than with a 404 is that Google will delete content from the index you know, way faster. Also the 410 will be recrawled less often. If a page is gone and there's just no other page to replace it with, if you don't have anywhere else to redirect to, you know, from a content proximity perspective, and you know that this page will never come back, you know, then go ahead and surf a 410. Otherwise, 404 is absolutely fine. Using different status codes makes it easier to search, you know, in within Search Console, you know, where you can filter information again by using the different status codes. So with the 410s, you know that you did that on purpose. So you don't have to revisit those over and over again. But again, 404 can be accidental, so you have to keep a close eye on that, especially on the new ones. To streamline the process of finding client-side errors on your website, you, know, you can also use the um, issues report of the SEMrush site audit tool. There you will find checks that will help you, you know, to find pages that return 400s, but also as well as finding broken internal links and images as well.